Mariota gives it to Henry. Henry bounces it outside. 5, 10, 15, stiff arm, 20, 25, 30, 40, stiff arm, 50, 40, 30. He's on his feet. Big chase, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Titans, 99 yards. The longest run in franchise history. What a run, Derek Henry. Our next guest burst onto the scene last season and is now one of the top backs in the National Football League. Titans running back Derek Henry is on the show with yours truly. Let's get right to it, Derek. First of all, before I even get into you and the Titans, obviously big news within your division. We learned that Andrew Luck was retiring from football. What was the reaction from you and your teammates with the Tennessee Titans? Oh, yeah, we definitely uh, – we all wish him the best. You know, um, this game comes with a lot, you know, on your body and mentally. And, you know, somebody sometimes people just hit that point where they just need a break and get away from the game and, you know, spend time with their family and, you know, get their self back right. You know, so, you know, we wish them the best of luck, best, best of luck. And, um, you know, he's a great player. Let me get to you. You had a great year the last quarter of the season. Rushed for over 200 mm-hmm. yards against Jacksonville. Rushed for 100 and changed the next game as well. Last four games, everybody was talking about you. You end up rushing for yeah. over 1,000 yards last year. How are you feeling about what you're going to pull off this upcoming season? You know, just really focus on, you know, this, you know, getting better, you know, each and every day. Uh, build, build off the positives, you know, from last year and just improve the negatives, you know, like I always say. So, you know, just competing every day, getting better, you know, and um, get, get, getting ready to get this thing rolling. Talk to me about what you're feeling about your offense, because obviously we're looking at Marcus Mariota. He's in the last year, that fifth year, you know, of his contract. We know what this means to him. It's a contract year, and everybody's talking about he's under the spotlight. Now, you and I have been on the air together when we were in Nashville. You came to the defense of your boy now. You came to the defense, but you got Ryan Tannehill there now. How's the quarterback situation looking, and how confident is the offense feeling with the personnel y'all have in place? I know we uh, we're very confident in our quarterback. Uh, you know, Marcus um, Tannehill, he's a, a great quarterback as well. They both do uh, great jobs when they're in there on the field. So, you know, um, we're confident in Marcus, confident in Tanny. You know, they're both great competitors. You know, we're just out here trying to get better. You know, why in training camp this last week? You know, and finishing this uh, this, tra- this preseason off right. Listen, I know you're busy, so I only got one more question for you. What's a reasonable expectation for the Tennessee Titans this year? We look at you guys, and there doesn't appear to be any glaring weakness. Luck is out in Indy. Lamar Miller is out in Houston. Jacksonville no longer has Blake Bortles, but we don't know what Nick Foles is going to do there because this ain't Philadelphia. What are you guys' expectations for this upcoming season? You already know I'm going to answer this. We're going to keep our head down and work. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to grind each and every week, keep our head down, ignore the noise, and just work, and then mm-hmm. see what happens. Well, I ain't worried about you, but I ain't going to lie. I'm worried about that quarterback. But I'm going to leave it alone, Derek. I'm going to let you go because I know you got to go. I got to go, too. I'm going to be nice, though, D. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a thank you. All right, bro. All right. All right, that was Derek Henry yesterday with Stephen A. Appreciate that. Let's take a look at some notable storylines in the AFC South, shall we? After reaching the AFC Championship in 2017, the Jags took a huge step back in 2018, but Blake Bortles is out. Super Bowl MVP Nick Foles is in. The Titans came up one game short of a postseason berth in 2018. Marcus Mariota enters year five with high expectations. As you just heard in Nashville, the story of the offseason and maybe the last several years is the retirement of Andrew Luck. Jacoby Brissett takes over trying to make it to -to back-to-back postseason appearances for Naptown. Finally, the reigning division champion Texans bring back a loaded roster, but uncertainty with Jadavion Clowney and the loss of Lamar Miller will make it harder for Deshaun Watson in company. So it's our 2019 preview of the AFC South. No more luck, Max. So who's the most important player in this division? I mean, we could get cute with it or we could just say the answer, yeah. which is Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is the whole shooting match there. You just mentioned it, especially if you're down some chips. Mm -hmm. You need this guy to do what he did in college. By the way, to do what he's done in the pros so far, to be like, and this season it may be time to say, is Deshaun Watson an elite quarterback? Like, when does he actually become an M, like, get into the MVP conversation? He wins a lot of games, a lot of different ways. And especially with Luck's retirement, maybe even had Luck been playing, he's the most important player in the division. I disagree. 
I think it's Nick Foles. And I think it's Nick Foles because two years ago, we saw the Jacksonville Jaguars go to the AFC Championship game. They had a lead against the New England Patriots. Some would argue, uh, had it not been for Blake Bortles and their collapse, and they would have been in the Super Bowl that year, obviously. Then they come back last year. They obviously struggle with a miserable season. They're the second to the last uh, offense. They're the second worst offense in the entire National Football League. They're 26 with their passing attack. Blake Borders with three and nine as a starter. He only completes 60 percent of his passes. Anything but impressive. 13 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Some would say he was horrific to the point where you needed to felt the need to put in Cody Kessler. You look at this defense, particularly we drafted this kid Josh Allen to help Calais Campbell and those boys rush the passer. And you know other cats are expecting their money. And you're looking at it from the standpoint that you're expecting their defense to be elite. The question is, what are they going to do offensively? And everything is predicated on Nick Foles. He's been handed the keys to, you know, championship contention, basically. He's the difference between that and purgatory. He's that significant to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'd say he's the one to watch in the AFC South. Once the, once the playoffs start, if they're there, I would agree. To start the season, I like Deshaun. Mm. All right, fair enough, guys. Uh, earlier in the show, I want to go back to a topic we had because it was a really good conversation. Mm -hmm. And we're discussing Big Ben's comments about calling out A.B. last season and how it ruined their friendship. Well, Brown is apparently done with Big Ben's talking. A.B.'s now deleted the tweet telling Big Ben they were never friends and to shut up already. Obviously, A.B. is now a Raider. Stephen A., how do you think his current teammates should view him? Because he's been in the news a lot for things other than football. Well, I think they should view him with caution. And I take no pleasure in saying that, but I think more so than the Big Ben Roethlisberger stuff was the clap back at Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, who confided in him, who reached out to him, who, who obviously felt like he was somewhat of a protege to uh, Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown came at him in the offseason mm -hmm. after he had gone to Oakland. Everybody can understand the stuff with you and Big Ben. We might disagree or agree depending on the situation take sides. But there's no defending what he did to Juju Smith-Schuster because he was a kid and he wasn't showing you any disrespect whatsoever. And you even came back at him. So it just shows how much of a loose cannon you are in that particular kind of situation. And I think that if you are a teammate of his, you know what, you got to have love for him because he could really, really ball. And if you talk to Antonio Brown, for the most part, he seems like an incredibly nice guy. But to see the willingness to go at after everybody he just gives you the impression that no one is safe. And when you run across somebody like that, you have to proceed with caution. Here, look, I'm a teammate of Antonio Brown's. Ask me any question about Antonio Brown. I'll be a teammate of Antonio Brown's. Um, are you worried about Antonio Brown being a distraction this season? Antonio Brown's one of the greatest players who ever lived. He's going to do him. That's all. Like, you, if you're a teammate of Antonio Brown's, understand, you don't need to get caught up in the mix that way. Mm -hmm. All you have to know, and what everyone knows, is... It's, it's the little, to paraphrase Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. if Antonio Brown don't do nothing, he's going to ball, mm -hmm. counting all day like the clock on the wall. Like, don't let the fact that he's counting his money confuse you. He is going to ball when he's on the field, period. And he's going to be a distraction when he's off the field. The, the, his teammates should not go near the distraction. They shouldn't answer questions about it. They shouldn't worry about it. Whatever he does, he's just doing him. But when he's on the field, he's one of the best who ever did it. It's pretty simple. He's one of the best who's ever did it. Nobody would refute that. But the reason why I don't look at this as simplistically as you do is because when you are teammates, you find you, you end up getting close to certain people. Not everybody, but you do have people that you're close enough to. And what I'm saying to you is that if he's shown a willingness and a propensity to, to quote, unquote, turn on you because he's caught up in his own situations, then, you know, you have to be you have to monitor that. You remember what Juju Smith Schuster, he brought up direct messages that were sent to him by Juju. We were not aware of their communication. Antonio he was Brown, in the wrong for that. I'm saying, but, that, but that's all. I'm by the way, to he say. made Juju look better, listen, not listen, worse. What I'm trying to say is that trust matters. You can like somebody, you can be weary of somebody or whatever. But you know what? You got to be able to trust who they are. And that when it comes, and all I'm saying to you is that that's all I'm saying. I'm if you're saying a player, like you gotta, might be you gotta scared, monitor that. You might be scared to fully let him in. But hold on, let's say he throws. Something. And you don't have to let him in. I'll you don't a, have to let him in. I'll you don't be have to a do that to people that he you just threw with. under the bus. Ask me a question. Uh, it's this is not that hard. 
Ask me a question. I'm no, a teammate he just threw under the no, bus. No, I get how you answer all, it, but all, I'm all saying do I get say, where current teammates might be, like, a little concerned. Like, I, I'm somebody that doesn't naturally trust people. You have to earn my trust. And if you kind of bad-mouthing guys you apparently had love for, it make, it'll make me a little nervous. No matter what he says, if anyone asks, even if it's about a, te a, a current teammate, yeah. if anyone asks them, Antonio's entitled to his opinion. He's great. That's it. Just leave it alone. You don't have it's to a, be I'm, best. No, that's I'm, I'm, the I'm, media. I'm, listen, I'm not trying to pretend it's a big deal. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to pretend it's a big deal. All I'm trying to say is that if somebody has a history of divulging private conversation and private information, that's somebody you're going to be leery you're gonna, of. You might keep him that's at all, arm's that's distance. All, that's yeah. all I mean. But he don't, that's all I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, that's it. like, obviously, Antonio Brown has shown he doesn't need to be best friends with teammates right. in order to yeah. ball. And I'm saying they need to make sure they feel the exact sure. same way. Sure. We don't need to be that way in order to ball together. No, we can course. ball together and then go our separate ways after the work is done. Yeah, but you might not need to hang out. It's just like people that gossip about other people, they make me nervous because I'm like, hey, they would do that about me. For so sure. you kind of keep your distance a little bit. Uh, earlier, we had a good debate. Our poll question was, is Cam Newton overrated or underrated? This is surprising. 60% of you came back and said Cam is overrated agreeing with you not agreeing with Max or Keyshawn well let me say this Max is not it's not that Max was wrong it's that we have to understand that there are people out there who talk about Cam Newton with such laudables mm -hmm. and I'm saying I know he can ball I know he's a winner I get that but for the first seven years of his career these were his numbers in terms of strictly his passing accuracy. I ain't talking about that heart inside his chest. I ain't talking about his ability to run with the football. I ain't talking about his athleticism. I didn't talk about his ability to win games. I'm only talking about his passing accuracy. Nothing and else. And then with the new offensive coordinator, first half of the season before the shoulder injury, his passing accuracy was way up. Right. Now, he never had an offensive juggernaut mm -hmm. around him. Right. He has McCaffrey now. Mm -hmm. he, his, he has the offensive coordinator mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And he's but it, already but it gone to a Super Bowl and won an MVP. But it wasn't after he got hurt. He was getting beat up by the Steelers before they hurt him that game. Yeah, he but, got, he was, but he was throwing <laughs> the ball down the I'm, field. I'm just saying, no, no, they were, they, they were getting blown out that night. That was a Thursday night game. They were getting oh, beat down. All right. First day okay, night. I'm saying they were getting yeah. beat down. I'm just saying. The U.S. Open continues after hurt. us. We will be there on Friday. I cannot wait. TJ NFC Watt. East preview tomorrow.